Keith Griffith III developed an interest in beekeeping at age 11, when both of his parents were incarcerated. My uncle told me about beekeeping. Now 15, with camera in hand, Keith's love of bees is all the buzz in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. He is a teenager and already a business owner. Keith Griffith is taking his future into his own hands and succeeding. Filmmaker Evan Miscagney helps Keith shine a light on the importance of bees, nature, and his mental health. Everybody goes through challenges. Everybody has a story. We can only speak on our story. This is intro take one. My name is Keith Griffin III, but most people know me as the beekeeper. And this is my Uncle Sean. He got me into beekeeping. Uh, Uncle Sean is uh, number one mentor for me doing beekeeping. This is our escape plan right here. This is our sugar water spray. Will we use this one? We'll like spray it on the hives and the bees, boom, the bees are distracted by it. They like, be, you know, bees like sugar, anything sweet. And they would just go all over the uh, sugar water that's on the hive. And sometimes when we open up the hive, we like spray it on them so they can like, so they don't want to fly around at us. Try to get our first spray and pull for today. Yep, so far. Whenever we open it and I see all the bees, I just, Watch it, and I'm just mesmerized how there's so many, and they all have, and they all know what they're doing. And it's just crazy because they're like little bugs, just like this size, and they just they're intelligent. Personally, whenever I do beekeeping, I feel like I'm with nature and stuff. Like, so like you were one with nature. Yeah, something. Like, I guess you can say something like that. Working with the bees takes my mind off of all my other challenges. I want to make this film because my family and I have a story to tell. When I was born on February 18, 2007, my dad gave me a nickname, Muddies. I was born and raised in Kentucky, and I've always been interested in nature at a really young age. You were very, very thoughtful and compassionate as a child. You very caring even now. I remember we went to the grocery store one time and, and the sheriff was out there collecting groceries for some something. And you said, let's go back in there and get them some groceries. So we went back in the store and got groceries. You say you always was caring. That's one thing that we all probably have stories of you asking to give somebody, help somebody buy some food. You know, can you pull over? Can I pet your dog? You know, you want to meet somebody's dog when we go to the park. If it's a stray cat or a stray dog, you want to take the dog or the cat home to make sure it's fed. I mean, it don't matter what it was, okay? you always wanted to help people. It was amazing to me, the similarities between you and your dad. He loves animals, and you just kind of grew up, you know, with the same, the same interests that he had. Everyone always tells me how much I remind them of my dad. But it's hard for me to hear that because my dad's been incarcerated since I was two years old. When you would visit your dad as a young child, probably until you was four, you thought you were visiting him at work, at school, because he was taking classes and, you know, he worked in the prison. You would take your homework in there, papers, and he would help you, you know, do homework. But one day you decided I think one of your friends, his dad came home and you said, I want to take home dad. And, and why come my dad can't come home? I want to take home dad. And so then I think that was the time they finally tried to explain to you that he had made some mistakes and that he was, you know, in prison and he couldn't come home yet. So you didn't really feel that loss until 2017. In 2017, everything changed for me. I was 10 years old, and my mom was incarcerated as well. 
I didn't know if I'd ever see my mom and dad ever again. When you came to Louisville to stay with me, I really didn't talk to you about what was going on because we really didn't want to have you worried or stressed out because you would, you, you were a feeler. You would be worried and concerned about everybody's feelings. I stopped doing well in school. I was having therapy sessions to help me get my mind off what was going on, and I was moving between my grandmother's homes and uncle's homes. I just wasn't feeling the same. And, you know, I was sad. I was something. I thought I did something, but personally, I didn't really know what to expect. And I just kept on living and looking forward to the next day, hoping if something happens, oh, my dad gets come gets to come home the next day, or my mom, both of them gets to come out the next day. So, When both of your parents, you know, got incarcerated and went through what they went through, and then I got uh, to be in a more of a role in your life, you know, I can't. Uh, get out here and throw the football while we can't fly the drum, you know, do the, some of the things that I felt like uh, as a little boy you needed to, you know, you needed to be able to do. And then my uncle told me about beekeeping. Then you asked some questions about bees and the queen bees. I think it was your favorite bee, the queen bee. It was so much and just learning and going through the process, man. And I remember telling your mom and your past that it was like something clicked. He is a teenager and already a business owner. Keith Griffith is taking his future into his own hands and succeeding. Keith Griffith is a normal teenage boy. I see the oh, here's mine. Who loves basketball and does well in school. But there's one thing that makes him even more special. His love for bees that's blossomed into Being Together LLC. For Keith, beekeeping is a way to not only help his community through learning about the importance of bees, but also mental health. In 2018, beekeeping was a big game changer for me. It helped me do better in school and it helped me think about how to start a new business. It kept me very focused until my mom got home. You can just write mom. Okay. Yay. My God. <laughs> the bees. And I was just like, oh my God, he's going to get stung and I ain't going to have no kid no more. And it turned out to be a really good thing and I'm very thankful. Um, for your Uncle Sean that has paved the way for that. I don't know where, where you would be at, you know, if it wasn't for my family and your dad's side. We would deliver orders to people, like we'd meet them at Jefferson Mall or something, and they'd be like, it's Keith, it's Keith, the beekeeper, the beekeeper, it's Keith. And, and like you were just a celebrity. At the time, too, I was really trying to find a way to make being healthy cool. And it was like once it sparked inside of you, and then stuff took off the way that it did, it just made sense. You know, like, this is how we can make being healthy cool again. It's just, it's just become a family affair. Oh. Is it cold in there? Yeah. I'm trying to move as slow as I can so this thing won't hit the mic. Uh, no. What'd you say? I just don't want this hitting the mic. Hello. Uh, my name is Keith Griffiths III, and I'm 15 years old, and I've been doing beekeeping for about 14 years. Oh, not 14. Four years now. <laughs> um, I've been doing it for four years now. My uncle right here has got me into it, and you know I've been enjoying it so far, and I'm glad to tell you guys about what I've learned. So. Who else out here, too, is my uh, mom. Hello, everybody. I'm Stephanie. I'm Keith's mom. Um, I do the back end of being together. We, we focus on honeybee preservation and mental health awareness. Keith went through a tough time in his life. He used that as a coping mechanism with mental health, OK? So he's, he's got his stuff in the stores now. <laughs> he's been on Good Morning America, and he's won a lots of awards and achievements that he has received. So throughout this presentation, you will see what um, Keith does um, with the bees, um, how he basically opens up more uh, while he's out there with the bees and being able to teach people about the importance of uh, the honeybees. Not only was I a beekeeper, but I went around giving talks to people how important bees are to our planet. A balanced ecosystem is where things work together, bees depend on each other, and so do we. I got homework. What? Huh, the other teacher signed us a three-page paper today. 
I get math homework every day out of this class. It sucks. Right, yeah. That was the that was probably the one of the main things to really help just knowing, okay, this is what we're gonna talk about first. This is what we're gonna talk about next. Mm -hmm. so I just kept this is goofy. Nope, yeah, go ahead and step up your phone. Goofy. It was dope. Just, I'm a real person. No, you know how it go when, when people can relate, you know, the more it is. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. I'm good, man. What's up, man? What's up? What they do? What they do? You know what they do, man. How you feel? Good. You feel good? Yeah, I'm just, I got I, I to gotta go home and do homework now. <laughs> yeah, I know it, man. Tell me about it, please. There you go. My man. My man. That's all I'm talking about. You gave it your best effort. That's it. How your mama do? Uh, she did good. Oh, she be doing this laughing at him. When she get to talking, she just start laughing. She did yep. I. She did I. She <laughs> did I. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to go help Uncle Sean out with this chair. Hold up. You're going to look at the sky for a moment. During those times when I first did it, going through that tough stuff that was happening, and you know, it helped me take my mind off of it because I was having fun doing it. I just wanted to keep on doing it because I can't just ask my uncle to drive me to the park so I can go play some basketball real quick. I feel like I'm moving forward in life and I have everything I need right now except for my dad. Okay, that's enough for the Yeah, we already said it, they're just waiting to now.
definitely been uh, pretty tough for us, you know, so pretty tough. You know, I tried to make it as normal as possible for you. I hope I did a good job. <laughs> Something. No more thinking that that was gonna happen earlier. He said, I'm just very confused. Cause I thought what we're doing right now was gonna be at the conference. We about to go over here and meet my boy. We about to we about to surprise my son. Keith Griffith the third. I waited for this day for a long time, man. Yeah, a, lot, a, a real long time, man. Put your mask in your uh, in your put your mask in your. I mean, I'm gonna call her and see, cause I've been confused. Go all the way to the light. Okay. Oh, are you here? Are you here? You're at the Walmart? Where are you at? Are y'all behind the Walmart? I mean, behind the McDonald's? All right, all right. Okay. She completely did not answer my question, so I'm more confused. She says she's across the street. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I've been confused this whole day. Oh my gosh, this is happening. <laughs> if he looks around and sees, man, I'm talking about. Make sure you do not have K facing, you know, just distract him. Is that him over there? I think he's over here right now. I'll be behind you. Oh, there she is. Where'd she come from? Where's Hi. You, where'd she <laughs> come from? Hey, what's going on? How are you? Mm. <laughs> come here. What? What? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, <we're not> <laughs> How you doing, man? Oh, I love you. <laughs>
So you know something about directing and producing, huh? I guess. Yeah, I'm daddy. I can do that. <laughs> what is it called? Interview take three. What are you doing on that? <laughs> well, I always knew it was like, I was like, I, always, I was like, I don't know, I have a dad. I'm gonna get in calls from him and stuff. I'm talking to him, having a great time talking to him. And I know he's gonna come up at some point, so I'll just wait and just make the best time out of it I can until he gets back and just be able to get new, better memories and stuff. Um, I mean, you know, I always knew that she was there. Um, I always got stories told. People always saying, oh, then you look just like him. Or you look like your mama or something. <laughs> I'm like, huh, I got it. She really did, man. Like, she really kept you in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, every visit, this woman would drive five or six hours with you in diapers. I'm talking about in the snow. I'm talking about in the ice and the blizzards and tsunamis to come visit me and deal with whatever she had to deal with financially, dealing with work, taking out, putting in vacation days or missing work or getting rental cars or whatever it was and because she understood the importance of being together. But I know that that was the key, you know what I'm saying, to us having the relationship that we have right now. You know, she's gonna make the best decisions for the family and stuff like that, but she still lets you know too that, you know what I'm saying, like there is a man, there is somebody called dad, there is a father. None of that would have been possible without your mom keeping you in my life. I don't never want you to not realize how, what type of mother you have. You, do, you got a special mom. Everybody goes through challenges. Everybody has a story, you know what I'm saying? But we can only speak on our story. All right, I feel like a beekeeper now, y'all. I'm gonna be like you, you know what I'm saying? You the son and I'm the dad, but you know, sometimes we can reverse roles, you know what I'm saying? Not as far as son and dad, but you know, as far as how most people look at it like, the son want to be like the dad, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you inspire me, you encourage me, you motivate me, so, you know, I want to be like you too. Anybody that know me knows Lil Muddy's, you know what I'm saying? They know Keith the Third. They know about these bees. They know about our family. They know about being together, and they know that it's bigger than being together. I love it. I love it. I love my sons, my grandsons, suiting up. All right, so how do you feel that my dad is home? I am so grateful and so happy that your dad is home. And just seeing you, you all, three of you all together, you, your uncle, and your dad together. And it's like, yep, yeah, being together, that's what we about, that's what we do. My dad proposed to my mom as soon as he got home. And now I have a baby brother on the way. You know, bees have to rely on each other just like us. Bees also have to depend on each other just like us. Bees thrive together when they are together, and I feel like that's what happens when family are together, too. Is that a wrap? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
Major funding for this program is provided by Additional funding by For more information on Films by Kids, visit 13.org slash Films by Kids.